Hey guys, I'm Jim, WT1W, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. So today I want to talk about power. I want to talk about DC power as well as AC power, portable DC and AC power. What, Jim, you're talking about a 12-volt lithium-ion battery. Not exactly. As hams, we all love LifePo batteries. I have multiples of them. Big ones, small ones, medium-sized ones. They're all great. I never met a battery I didn't like. But in a lot of applications, in ham radio and other uses, a LifePo battery is kind of a unitasker. It really requires you to wire things up, either with clamps or clips or end connectors of some sort. And is it got power poles on it, or has it got bare wires, or has it got spade terminals? It doesn't really translate to people who are not super technical or comfortable working with things that are electric-y. So, while lithium-ion batteries certainly have their place in amateur radio, I think some other things have their place in amateur radio. Now, straight up, I'm going to tell you because someone is typing in the comments right now. There is no RF noise, typically, from a lithium-ion battery. Short of the BMS causing issues, most batteries are going to be super RF quiet. When you go to something like a power bank or a solar generator or whatever you call it, a big honking battery, a BHB, you might get some RF noise because there's more electronics in there, but it also provides a whole lot more functionality. So as you can see here, and let me scoot out of the way, I have more than a couple battery packs here. So I have one that will run a CPAP machine for eight hours easily, charge my cell phone 15 times over, up to something that'll run my heat and run a fridge or two. For a while. Certainly a television and a couple of fans in the case of an extended power outage. So I want to take a look at these things and see what the differences are and things you might be interested in looking at when we're talking about something like a BHB. So let's jump to the overhead camera and take a closer look. So this is the newest battery pack I got. This is an All Powers and uh, it has a model number. I don't remember what it is. I'll find it. And all these battery packs that I'm showing you will be in the description below with Amazon affiliate links. If you click the links, the channel gets a little bit of revenue from Amazon. It doesn't cost you anything more to click it. Up front, all of these battery packs were purchased by me directly. None of these were sent from vendors. So this guy is an All Powers S300 Plus. This has some cool features, but it also is actually kind of missing a feature or two. It still works fine. There's nothing wrong with it. So on the front here, you can see we have, of course, the main power. AC circuitry on or off, which is what that is. And then this button is DC power on or off, as well as having a few USB ports over here for charging phones. This one is 100 watt. It doesn't say PD, but at 100 watts, it almost has to be PD, power delivery. And then these are two 1.8 watt USB ports, which is going to be USB 2.0. It's not going to be quick charge. This is the older standard for USB. So I can charge a phone there. This has wireless charging, Qi, 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 I don't know how you say that word, QI. So it has that on top. Over here, for recharging the pack, of course, we have a, a, a XT60 connector here for using a solar panel with this or charging this off of a 12-volt connection off your car battery. Of course, you'd have to have some sort of connection to go to XT60. This is an input to charge the device. This is a 12 volt DC output. This is a cigarette lighter power point adapter. And that is an output over here on this side. This is a very excellent feature and I'll tell you why. This is to charge this from the wall, 120 volt. We'll talk about this in a minute. We'll come back to this piece. This is a small pack. This is rated for 288 watts. Typically, these things are called 300 watt hours. This one is, it says on the service tag on the bottom, which probably will not show up on the camera, 288 watt hours. This will run some stuff for a while, depending on what you're running off of it. Like I said, this should run a CPAP on 12 volts all night. My CPAP machine, my wife's CPAP machine are both 12 volt input. So something like this with direct 12 volt plug in would, would run the CPAP all night. With this particular model, I would have to make an adapter 
and on this particular model, the only way to do that would be to take a cigarette lighter plug and run it out to a 5.5 to a, um, millimeter barrel jack. And this guy, and I, I don't remember all the prices. I will list all that in the description below as well. I don't remember the prices off the top of my head for any of these. Prices have gone down on these considerably over the last several years. The next two I have are a little older. And this is the JYE model. And this has a lot of the same thing. Now this has, of course, there's DC input right here with a, a barrel jack. This one has some additional features. This has a 12 volt, 10 amp output and a 24 volt, four amp output for DC. Of course, it has a cigarette lighter adapter and an AC plug. Most of these have some sort of LED light on the back. This one also supports wireless charging as well. The downside to this one, which is a downside to the other one, is that this has to be plugged into a wall wart style uh, charger to charge stuff with it. You can see here it has a USB 3 quick charge port. It has two USB 2 style charging ports, and it has type C. And I don't remember off the top of my head what is the power rating on that type C charge connector but that's all it says. It doesn't even say power delivery or give a wattage. I'd have to look at the manual for that particular one. So all in all, not a bad machine. This one also is a 300 watt rated. If we look at the service tag on the bottom, 288 watt hours. And then it tells us what our input is and our different outputs here. So the type C, it says five to nine volts at two amps. So that would be 18 watts maximum on the type C output. So that is not the most current USB-C power delivery standard, but it should charge a phone quite adequately. The next one I have, and this is an Audu, and this has an XT60 or 80. I'm not sure what that one is. Uh, to connect up, it has a specific kind of little jumper cable thing that plugs in there. That's what that's for. It has USB ports. Again, it has two probably USB 2 ports and two USB-C ports, but it doesn't list specifically on there what those are. It charges, again, off of a barrel jack. Again, I'm gonna mention why that's important to me. There is our cigarette lighter charging. This does not support quick charge. It does have an LED light on the end. Almost all these things do. And then this guy has two 110 volt plugs that you switch on or off from here. On the back of this one is where our service panel is. And this says this is a rated capacity of 25 amp hours, rated energy of 300 watt hours, which is about a standard for these size things. They're sold as model 300s, almost all of them. And it tells us over here, um, our outputs, so USB type C, five volts at three amps or nine volts at three amps. So this would actually give us a little more power than the other one, up to 27 watts at nine volts and up to 15 watts at five volts. 24 watts, is that right? 24 watts at um, two amps. So that's about standard for this, this size thing. This is an older one. This one is probably three or four years old. I've used it multiple times. So that is the Audu. The last one I have, and that is one I got recently, and that's this guy right back here. All right, the last one I wanna mention is this guy, and this thing is huge. Uh, this weighs about 65 pounds. This is the Affery. This is a 2000 watt hour charging station, BHB, whatever you wanna call it. And it has several options that some of the others don't. And I, I neglected to mention, uh, some of these have Bluetooth as well, so you can get an app for your phone, either Android or iOS, so you can actually monitor the power consumption on the device while it's in use, which is a handy thing. So this guy, as you can see, has multiple USB ports, two specific quick charge ports uh, that support the uh, quick charge standard for USB 3.0. And then we have multiple USB-C ports that are specifically labeled power delivery. Three of these are 20 watt, as you can see, and then one of them is 100 watt, 
This, of course, turns on the USB. It has an LED light. It has a main power switch. It has a beautiful display, which I'm not going to turn on. We have on this several options here. We have a cigarette lighter plug adapter for DC output. We have an XT60 for DC output. And we have two, I believe, five and a half millimeter barrel jacks for DC output. So with something like my CPAP machine, this would plug directly into it without using the power brick with the right cable. This guy weighs uh, several pounds. The other thing I wanted to share with you on this particular device is this has, of course, cooling. It also has, and this is important to me at least, this uses a regular 120 volt plug to charge it or XT60s as you can see down here on the bottom of the screen. And this is the main feature that I really like about two of these devices is I don't require a specific power brick to charge them. On the other side, you can see here, this is our AC button. And down here in this hatch, we have six AC outlets, which is awesome for a total of 2,400 watts total. So this thing will run for quite a while. Like all of these, it does tell you how much it's using, uh, how much power is left, so on and so forth. The top of the device comes with a hatch cover, so you can keep the power cord and any accessories you have with it in there, the user manual, if you want to use that. So this is the Affery. This is a great device. This is something that would be awesome for extended runtime for fans and televisions and the cable modem to support your internet during a power outage, that kind of thing. So there are a lot of options with something like this. Now, of course, this costs a good bit more than the 300 watt hour versions. So as you can see, I have an array of choices and there's quite the range of features on all of these. There are many brands and models of these. These are some that I have purchased over the last year or two. They all work fine. I've never had a problem with any of them. And again, this is not a sponsored video. This is stuff I actually use. I haven't noticed any specific RF issues coming out of any of these. And honestly, if I'm using one of these in an emergency situation, RF noise from it is the least of my concerns. This is something I think you could probably use at field day fairly easily to power a small fridge or a fan or something like that. Or if you're out in the park at a POTA, I doubt that you'd want to carry one on a soda with you, but if you do, you're a boss. Guys, that's all I've got for today. Just wanted to share some options with you. Y'all, I appreciate you watching. Make sure you share the video, click the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and please ring the bell so you get notified whenever I post any new videos, and together we can hack the YouTube algorithm. Y'all, 73, have a great day.